Oh, Sabi ko, 9 years lang sa aviation, pero akala ko talaga binubuo yung buong Airbus sa Toulouse. No, hey, I've been saving all my coins. Because you know what? Art is expensive. For example, Orange Balloon Dog, Jeff Koons, $58 million. Number 17A, $218 million. But wait, 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 wait. This is the craziest. Salvador Mundi, $450 million. Where do you even get that amount of money? But I want to show you one more picture. The Airbus A380, also $450 million. From the looks of it, it's just another flying machine. Or is it? Do these planes belong beside all these other pieces of art? To answer this, we had to take a deep dive into Airbus's history and how these planes are made. Guys, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Shout out to Aviation Jets Trust. I'll be using his pictures for this episode. Check out his Instagram. Again, I'm Pilot Mike, and welcome to the Pilot Talk Show, the vlog where pilots talk about everything in aviation. Manufacturing a plane is like orchestrating a symphony. Every beat and every strum is perfectly timed, countless of hours spent in design and flight testing, with millions of components and thousands of experts. All working in symphony to give you the most technologically advanced airplanes ever made. First, let's look at the A380. In the A380, the biggest passenger jet ever created, you have 4 million parts. A very complicated art puzzle, a lot of which is still assembled by hand. But before the first puzzle piece is laid down on an aircraft, you have to rewind back several years. So for example, your iPhones, there's a new model every year. But for planes, 13 years between the A330 and the A380. 17 years between the A330 and the A350. And also, $11 billion in research and development. A simple misstep in this design process will literally cost maybe billions of dollars and years lost. These airplane designers are under a lot of pressure every time they make the next game changer. Airbus invests so much money to give you the best planes. For the A350, Airbus utilized the latest technologies. We have yes. been producing 15, more than 1,500 aircraft so far wow. and counting. So yes, uh, we'll tell you everything you need to know about you know, how we manufacture, assemble, and deliver all our aircraft to our uh, customers. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell us more about the clean design? So clean design is really, uh, you know, it's um, a design without any, um, any barriers, any limitations. It's really trying to deliver exactly what the customer wants. They want efficiency, they want safety, they want passenger comfort, they want wow. range. All these things which want, they want a really top asset for the, the future of their company. So that's just an example of how airplanes are made. The first step, for example, on this AT30neo, this is based on the original AT30CEO. But on our other Airbuses, like the Airbus AT50, they started from the ground up, meaning zero, and then they designed until they came up with the most technologically advanced exactly. aircraft for the next decades, decades to come. To Definitely. Come. Then, they use the latest technology for the A350, one of them being carbon fiber, which is being touted as the material of the future. Wait lang ah, this is crazy. Can you imagine a material that was first used to light a light bulb, eventually evolved and is now being used to make your airplanes, specifically the wings and mostly other parts. 
The carbon fiber arrives in the factory in spools, then layers and layers are used to create the most complex shapes. The structures are then placed inside a huge oven called an autoclave. Your end product? Airplane parts that are lighter and stronger and more fatigue resistant than steel. And you know what they say? Magaan! And as we know it, weight is... Money! Each kilogram of weight is equal to $1 million of cost saving during the lifetime of the aircraft. Okay, so reason number two, the complicated puzzle. But this puzzle has millions of pieces. But you know what makes this even more complicated? Is if the pieces were scattered all over Europe, which is exactly the case for all the planes that Airbus makes. Let's map it out. So Patrick is gonna take us around the aircraft and tell us where this part of the aircraft came from. We are now in the forward fuselage, which came from Hamburg, Germany. Hamburg, Germany. But if you move even further, the uh, front section, the, the nose, yeah, the nose section comes from a different place. Yes, indeed, it comes from France. Center fuselage now, right? Center fuselage is uh, made and um, yeah, manufactured in, in France. In France as well. well. Yeah. Ah, and if we move back after door three, we'll be in a section which is manufactured in Germany. Just look at how massive this place is. Yeah. And imagine shipping this all the way to Toulouse. And then once we get to the tail part, Germany, what? the uh, horizontal tail plane is actually coming from Spain. And wow. the vertical tail plane is also coming from Germany. Now let's take a walk outside so we can show you where the other parts of this plane is made. These engines are huge. They are the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines which are exclusive to the A330neo and they are assembled in Rolls-Royce Singapore. The landing gears produced in Gloucester, Southwest England and now we have these upward and swept back wings which are similar to the A350 and they were designed in Filton, United Kingdom. Okay, okay, okay. Sounds easy, right? But then here's the big hurdle. Literally big. Airplane parts are big. The fuselage alone is a total of 208 feet in length. That's around six school buses or maybe a 20-story building. And do you know how Airbus gets this part in one place? because the answer might shock you. They fly the parts to Toulouse for the final assembly line. Do you know how they fly it to Toulouse? No. They put it on their very own aircraft called the Airbus Beluga. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's so cute. Oh, Beluga wheels. The Beluga XL is a large transport aircraft created specifically to transport huge aircraft parts. Its entire front section opens up much like a huge mouth. Yes, like a blue whale's mouth. And you can fit landing gears, a fuselage, and even two A350 wings inside that. So once you have the parts inside the Beluga, you fly it to Toulouse, France for the final assembly line. And finally, we piece together that aircraft puzzle. It's just unreal, promise. When I showed this to some people, they thought I was pulling a prank. So I ko nine years sa aviation pero akala ko talaga binubuo yung buong Airbus sa Toulouse. No, well. Airbus is truly an international company. It's a European leader, but that sources everything, a lot of things uh, internationally. So it's it's a true international success. Mm. So 
Flying over to the south of France, these Beluga XL land in Toulouse, home to the Airbus final assembly line, one of the largest industrial plants in the world. Once the plane parts are transported to Toulouse, it goes through seven stations. Airbus manufactures several hundred planes a year, so everything has to be well orchestrated. Our latest uh, final assembly line of the A350 yeah. is equipped with a, a large amount of uh, solar panels, so uh, almost half of the energy that we is required. Almost, half the energy. almost to in order to run this plant, this assembly line comes from a solar panel. Wow. So it's really green from the very first day the aircraft is, uh, is being assembled. So reason number three of why these planes are considered art, the final assembly line is still completed by hand. The first station is station 59, which is the arrival station. This is where the cabin fit out happens. So highly trained personnel work on the inside of the cabin with extreme attention to detail and quality control. Going uh, on we have very, very skilled people, very, very talented people. They, they work with very high precision. So it's a, they, and when I visit the final assembly line, I see very, very passionate people. I so they want to deliver the highest quality products to our worldwide customers. Think about this for a second. Millions and millions of screws and parts, but once it's assembled, nothing should shift, nothing should fail even in severe turbulence. This is how critical this phase is. Then we move on to station 50. The aircraft already has the hydraulic system, water, and electrical system. The nose of the aircraft is connected to the center fuselage. These two parts are perfectly aligned and joined by 40,000 fasteners and 10,000 rivets. And this is done by hand. You also connect the landing gears in this station. Next is Station 40. In Station 40, Airbus connects the wings of the aircraft. These wings have undergone extensive testing. The wings for the A350 was tested for around 4,000 hours inside yeah, yeah, the yeah, wind yes. tunnel. Correct. To give you a perspective, it took me around 5 years to build up 4,000 hours of flying time. That's how much testing that yeah. goes in, not only in the A350, but also on all of Airbus's yeah. um, planes. It is then connected to the body with thousands of rivets. Yes, so it takes approximately 4,500 bolts to connect the two wings to the With center. 4,500 bolts? Yes, 4,500 ah. bolts. Uh, it's jointly done by robots and by human. So each cabin is especially designed for each airline, and this is done by another company. Let's all take a quick flight to Japan and visit Lift Aero Design. Lift Aero Design is an aviation design studio based in Tokyo and Singapore. They specialize in brand, livery, cabin, uniform design, and customer experience development. Basically, your whole experience the moment you step onto an aircraft. So Lift is quite unique as a design consultancy in that we do only aviation and we've been doing this for over 10 years. The most important thing is finding out what the client, in this case Cebu Pacific, wants to communicate what are their priorities, what they definitely don't want. Make sure that uh, the design that the client wants that we deliver for them is going to become reality. And of course, the final touch, painting the aircraft. Giving it the final look people will see when they look up in the sky. This aircraft will get five coats of paint using high-tech electrostatic paint spray system that distribute paint evenly. This is very important because as we said, paint also has weight. Basically, it takes between one to three weeks to, to do the painting and it takes five layers, up to five layers of paint in order to have um, the final, uh, achieve the final result. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, the only part you do not paint are the engine nacelles and some parts of the wing ah. and typically we are looking at around 300 to 400 uh, kilos of paint and weight is 
my name. Okay, so next we move on to station 20 where we attach the most expensive part of the airplane, which are of course the engines. Did you know that part of the assembly of these engines are still done by hand? Again, for me, this is artistry. Highly skilled engineers at Rolls-Royce manufacture some of the most advanced jet engines this industry has ever seen. Every new aircraft is tested extensively. And here you can see the test pilots testing the aircraft. These pilots subject the airplane to crazy testing. You have stress tests, crazy maneuvers, extreme weather conditions, conditions airplanes would not normally experience in flight. You know you can rely on these planes thanks to Airbus test pilots. This is a combination of 4.5 months of work and the uncountable thousands of hours given by the dedicated workers in Airbus. In a few days, this plane will be picked up and flown to its new home to fly millions of passengers. So again, I pose this question to you. Are airplanes art? <sighs> Maybe. It depends on who you ask. I mean, I can understand how it's hard to see these planes as art because ultimately, they are used by airlines to generate a shit ton of money. And that's not the purpose of paintings and sculptures or traditional art as we know it. But uh, I think when you realize that these planes are the culmination of years of humans dreaming of flight, from the Greek mythology to the flying machines of Da Vinci, that the same hands that could have created a sculpture or a painting instead created this plane, then yes, I guess you could say that airplanes are flying pieces of art. It's the stuff of dreams. And us pilots, we have an emotional reaction every time we hear these engines. And it's this intangible value that makes these planes pieces of art. And <laughs> Lalin. Again, I'm Pilot Mike, and this is the Pilot Talk Show.